Mr. Basic here. Welcome to part one of 18 of the Platts video manual, Global Settings. Now this time we're going to just go over all of the things that will be the same across the whole module, no matter what mode you are in. What is Platts? Well, it's 16 different modes, or 16 different synthesizers, or you could say 16 different computer programs with three knobs to um, to shape their sound each. Um, you could call them three, uh, 16 different instruments because we've got bass, drum, snare, and hi-hat. Those are instruments, right? But we've got these three knobs that can modulate them no matter what's going on and other things to, mo to modulate them. So that's what Platts is. It's basically 16 things in one. Um, so for that reason, uh, I'm doing 18 videos and not just all one video because the thing about Platts is that these three knobs are going to be unique to each mode. They're not going to ever do the same kind of thing. So these na names aren't really that important of the timber, morph, and harmonics because they're not always going to be have anything to do with harmonics or, or timber. Morph is a good word because it's very vague. However, uh, there is one thing that's going to always be the same, and that's the frequency knob. First of all, let's uh, start with the model selection buttons. Now, Mutable Instruments calls these models, these different modes, these different synthesizers here, or, or types of synthesis. Now, the left button is going to take you up and down <laughs> the melodic types. The right button is going to take you down the eight more percussive types of sounds. Now, um, it will always just scroll down when you press a button, but if you press between the left and right buttons to go from green to red, it scrolls across to the next one. So it kind of goes crisscross, you can go crisscross, up and down. Anyway, that's how that works. Now, the frequency knob like I said, performs the same function regardless of the model selected. It covers eight octaves, but can be narrowed down to 14 semitones if you'd like. And it can cover just one octave within you know, a, a higher range or a lower range, up or down, depending. Um, and so how are you going to do that? How are you going to change the um, range? of notes is this. Now since all of these, I've got the harmonics knob all the way to the right, all these lights are lit. That means I've got eight, uh, a range of eight octaves on this frequency knob. It goes bottom of eight octaves all the way up eight octaves to the end of that knob, right? But if I press this right button and I turn the harmonics knob down, I get one octave a lower octave, lower octave, lower octave, lower octave. These are all one octave range each for this frequency knob. So what that means is that if you'd like to do semitones and semi-semitones and microtones and microtonal stuff and go uh, at a, a finer point between, between the notes, then you might want to work with this frequency knob having only one octave range. But I like to have all of the octaves, you know, to work with. But hey, if you want to further tune and you want it to be easier to tune by turning this knob, then you might want to work w to put it into a finer form that way. With the holding down of the right button and of the turning of the harmonics knob. That's how you do that. Right? Okay. I always keep it at eight octaves. Now, the harmonics and timbre and morph knobs functions vary depending on the model selected, like I said. They completely vary. So you just have to learn them. This is why I'm doing 18 videos. I'm doing a, a, a video per mode and a couple more, this, including this global video. 
So, um, down to the artenuverters, these three. When left unpatched, they modulate Platts' internal envelope generator. So Platts being its own whole voice system, it has its own internal envelope that it uses, right? And these modulate the envelope. This will modulate the amount of envelope at, F at frequency modulated levels. So, so uh, it'll make a higher envelope, or a bigger envelope, bigger envelope, bigger envelope up into spacey types of noises, right? And um, and so that's what it'll do if nothing is patched into these three patch points here. You see the line going to each one? All right. But when uh, the CV is patched into these, they become attenuverters. Amount of CV going in to this can be it doesn't recognize it at all, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, or negative. They are attenuverters. And that's what they do when you've got something patched in there. Now, if you've got the envelope set on something already, unpatched, and then you patch something in and you change it, that envelope is not going to change. It's going to change the CV of whatever you got uh, patched, and that envelope, that internal envelope of plats, is going to stay the same. Okay. Now, when the model CV is patched, I'm going to give you a little example of this. It changes the mode based on how much voltage is going in, or the amount of CV, amount of control voltage going in to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the volt per octave that I've already, I'm already using for notes. I'm going to do a little arpeggio here, let's say. Okay. So, but if I also use that, to change the modes, it changes the sound at the amount of voltage, okay? So basically when the model CV is patched, the blinking light is the model at zero CV. That's this wave shaper one that I was on. That's where zero CV would be, okay? And the steady light indicates the current model at whatever amount of CV is going into it. And that's because of that arpeggio. These are the notes that I, that I put in, put different amounts of voltage in. And model changes happen when a trigger is received. So the trigger from the gate, from the arpeggios as well, the gates of the notes, since I've got this triggered in, the model's changing. If I didn't, it still changes because uh, the volt, I've got the volt per octave changing it as well, but just not in the same way. Okay. So there's that. Now, the, the trig CV triggers the sound, the envelope, and the low-pass gate. It triggers everything all at once. So basically, what that means is um, on, you know, on some modular systems, what you'd be doing to make a voice would be you'd be triggering the sound and you'd be triggering the envelope uh, as well from a clock or from, the, from a trigger, from the same trigger. You might want to have a split or a molt like this to do it. Um, and uh, you'd be triggering the VCA. Uh, you'd be triggering the gate. Uh, so, uh, but in this, you're triggering all of those behind the scenes. It's doing it for you. Um, and so it triggers the envelope and everything. So uh, basically what that means is, is that's what makes Platts a full voice or a full synthesizer sort of uh, all-in-one module.
Now, um, the level CV here is for the low pass gate. Now, this has uh, a low pass gate um, as opposed to a VCA on it, although it can uh, be just a regular VCA or it can be a low pass gate. And uh, you can do that um, by changing uh, some parameters in here. So, uh, this, is, this is how you, I'll show you how to do that. So, what you do is holding down the left button and turning the tomber knob will adjust the amplitude gate from low pass filtered amp to regular amp. So with all four, four lit up top there, it's a regular amplifier, like a VCA. And down here like this, it's a low pass gate, right? So you can have it anywhere between one or the other on a dimmer, on that timber knob, okay? Now holding down the left button and turning the morph knob adjusts the four lights down at the bottom, which is the de decay time of the envelope that's inside plats, the internal envelope. So it rings out more or it rings out less. And let's uh, go ahead and show you that. So these values will remain the same across all the models. This is a global setting you know, for these because the envelope is for the entire Platts module and it's not going to change when you change the modes. Okay. Now the volt per octave CV can range its notes um, at a maximum of three octaves down and seven octaves up from the root note that you have set by the frequency knob. So whatever this is at, you can get three octaves down on your keyboard or seven octaves up from there. Um, and uh, so potentially, I'm not sure, you might want to say in the comments whether you would agree uh, with the math on this, but that would mean that Platts has potentially 18 octaves to work with. Uh, with the root note all the way down, uh, three octaves down from that, the root note all the way up, seven octaves up from that, you know, plus your eight octaves that, that it spans that you can set your root note at, right? Kind of makes sense, right? Okay, tell me in the comments if you disagree. All right, now the out CV is a mono audio signal. This isn't, uh, the out and the aux are not a stereo signal, and nor can they be made to be into a stereo signal because they're made to be variants of each other, just little di differences between them. So you can choose between one or the other, or you can do both, and it doesn't take any amplitude. It doesn't take any volume from one or the other to have them both going. They can always be both going, and that's cool too. Um, all right, so basically uh, how we explain that is the aux output carries a variant or a sidekick or a different byproduct of the main out signal. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Tune in for next time. I am going to go over the classic mode. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.